In the ancient world, myrtle was a plant of completion. It was woven into bridal crowns, it was burned in temples, and planted at thresholds of worlds. Its leaves hold captured sunlight in tiny reservoirs called volatile medicines. What myrtle does to the air around it? Purifying, clarifying, creating new space for growth. It also does within us. This is the plant that teaches us. The breath of the land and the breath of the body is the same breath. Welcome to the gift of Myrtus Commonis, or Common Myrtle, the evergreen keeper of wholeness. It's found in a variety of habitats, including coastal and Mediterranean scrub, pine forest, swamp, marsh, and even found in rocky and sandy soils. It has naturalized in California, the American Southeast, Australia, and New Zealand. It thrives in mild maritime climates and appreciates occasional moisture. Often in the presence of other aromatic scrubland species. Myrtle persists long after human cultivation ceases, marking where people once tended the land. Myrtle can be found in the Myrtaceae family, al alongside eucalyptus, clove, allspice, and even guava. The leaves are evergreen, opposite, lance-shaped, and very simple. Completely smooth, no teeth, no serration, and the surface is very leathery, glossy, dark green, and slightly paler below. Young stems are square in cross-section and reddish. Mature bark is thin, smooth, peeling in papery strips. Five pure white petals surrounding a prominent burst of white stamens with golden anthers, fragrant, and they appear in late spring through summer from leaf axils on delicate stems. Dark blue blackberries, pea-sized or larger, crowned with persistent calyx remnants. They ripen in autumn to winter. Two lookalikes are the boxbush and privet, though the leaves are not aromatic. So a very good decisive test is to crush and smell because only myrtle produces that distinctive sweet, resinous, aromatic burst. Myrtle functions as a mid-succession pioneer species. It doesn't colonize the harshest disturbed ground but establishes after initial disturbance has calmed, helping to build the next layer of ecosystem complexity. It is an evergreen that provides food and shelter to various wildlife. What's really cool about it is that it's a great food source in the winter. Here I am on Thanksgiving day filming. It's cold, it's under 50 degrees, and there's fruit on this tree right now. There's not a whole lot of fruits that are fruiting at this time of year. I mean, there's lemons, grapefruit, myrtle. It also helps establish shorelines. You can often find it next to a lake or a creek or a coast as 
as we're finding right now, this is right next to a man-made lake. It also helps to improve the water quality. It provides exceptional pollinator support for bees and butterflies. The blooms in spring are phenomenal. The whole Myrtaceae family is known for carbon storage from the wood density and its tall structure. It is also known to improve soil structure by nitrogen fixing. Myrtle continuously releases volatile organic compounds. These aromatics have antimicrobial properties that reduce airborne and soil-borne pathogen loads in plants' immediate environment. This creates purified microclimate beneficial to surrounding vegetation. The plant parts harvested are typically the berries and the leaves. I only harvest what I'm going to use. I only take a small portion and leave the rest for wildlife and other humans. Even though dispersal will be done naturally, I do particularly love to help spread the plant. It has a very fresh and sweet scent resinous without heaviness, green with underlying warmth. The taste is bitter and astringent. You can tell that they're very drying because it tastes drying already. Like, my mouth is already dry. Eucalyptus-like clarity from cinnol. Floral sweetness from linalool. And a subtle, indefinable type of spice. The sense opens the sinuses immediately. What does it affect in humans? Well, it affects the respiratory tract, urinary tract, skin, and digestive systems. What does it do? Well, it expels mucus from the respiratory tract, so it reduces congestion. It's also an antiseptic and antimicrobial. It's an anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and promotes wound healing. The energetics are cooling and drying. There's also some new research about its anti-cancer properties, specifically in prevention and recovery from breast and prostate cancers. And may even help Alzheimer's. The active constituent in those studies is derived from myrtle and it's called myrocetin. How to use this plant. Solubility. Well, it's extracted best in an alcohol, which I can show you how to do. 
It's also fat soluble, so it's extracted well in fats and oils. And steam distillation also works well, like essential oils. You can also make an infusion, which is typically known as tea, that works all right as well. And it's used in cooking a lot. The berries are traditionally used in Middle Eastern cuisine, often paired with lamb and meat. Myrtle releases volatile compounds that regulate microbial populations in air and soil, creating balanced conditions where organisms can thrive. The same biochemical processes that restore ecological health also restore physiological health because they are the same health. Every pioneer species that heals disrupted ecosystems is also healing your disrupted systems. Tea, warming yet refreshing, a pleasant paradox, gently astringent and grounding, rather sweet. The persistent aromatic quality makes each sip an invitation to conscious breathing. Steam carries volatiles directly to respiratory tissues before liquid is even swallowed. So you have a bunch of really cool plant matter that you want to preserve and actually get all of the benefits out of. Extracts pretty much across the board will give you all of your constituents, all of your plant components, all of your active ingredients out of those plant tissues and into that alcohol. Get plant matter and alcohol and boom, you have an extract. So you want the vodka, the alcohol to, you can use any kind of alcohol. You can use whiskey, you can get use gin, tequila, whatever the heck you want. But I like vodka so I can taste what the plants actually taste like. Okay, so I kind of mushed them down and I have the vodka completely covering them. So I got a lid on it and I made a little sticky note that says Myrtle in vodka with the date, which is 11:25, And I'm gonna place it on this because I always think that I'm gonna remember what's in these jars, but months down the line, I really don't remember. It might even look completely different in a month. Hopefully it's still purple like this. I think it's gonna be. Well, I'm gonna put it in my medicine cabinet and I'll, I'll wait a month or two whenever I get around to it and strain it and put it in a little dropper bottle. It's in a concentration of nine to one. So nine parts apple cider vinegar, 
to one part of the myrtle berry juice. Hope you like the first installment of this new series, Wild Time, where we deep dive into plant properties, actions, their role in the ecosystem and within us.